how you think and feel about yourself shows up on the outside, but only always. How you think, but only always. <laughs> how you feel about yourself is how you take care of yourself. It is how you get dressed. And this is how I know it's true because it happens in my own brain. Every single morning when I wake up and I go in my closet to decide what I'm going to wear, I want to wear a sweatshirt and leggings. <laughs> Every day, Every day I go in my closet, oh, is today the day I can wear sweatshirts and leggings? <laughs> because that's just what I want. Because I'm tired. I just woke up. I'm sleepy. Maybe I'm cold because usually I am. And I just want to be warm. And so that's how I'm feeling in the moment. And so that's what I want to wear is a sweatshirt and leggings and fuzzy socks. And every morning, I tell myself, I know that would be so fun to just wear sweatshirts and leggings today, but what do you have on your schedule today? What are you doing today? And what do you need to be wearing? And what are you going to feel the most confident in while you're doing those activities today? And I think, okay, today I have client calls. And so I need to be dressed for my client calls. And so then I know that leads me to a, a, a place in my closet for those clothes. And then I think, how do I want to feel today? How do I want to feel when I'm on my client calls? Well, today, this morning, I wanted to feel light and cool because it's warm here finally. And so I wore this shirt because it's got holes in it and it's kind of airy. And so it's not very warm. I don't wear this in the winter because it's too cold, right? So this is the shirt that I picked because that's how I wanted to feel today. Not how, what do I feel at the moment? What's that? It's very cute, by the way. Oh, thanks. Not how I'm feeling in the moment right now, but how I want to feel when I'm on the calls with my clients. Okay. Because how you feel on the inside is how you're going to show up. So if you want to feel confident, then you need to to generate that feeling inside, or you need to do something, create something that's going to help you feel that way, whether that's clothes, whether that's food, whether that's movement, whether that's a shower, like it doesn't matter. Do for yourself what is going to create that feeling. Okay. Um, so I would say probably three times a month, I actually am in a sweatshirt and leggings, but that's what I want to wear every single day, every single day. That's how I feel when I wake up in the morning. That's what I want to wear. So it's important for you to know that because I look like this most of the time. That is not how I want to feel. And that's how I, not how I want to look when I very first wake up in the morning. It is a conscious, intentional thing that I've created for myself. So our thoughts create our feelings. And then our feelings is how we show up in the world. And then how we show up in the world creates the results that we have, right? I have a, I have a couple of examples from my life that I'm thinking of. One is old and one is recent. Okay. Okay. So um, my grandma did really well with money. And in her old age, she had made the she had made the decision that she wanted to spend the money together as a family rather than have her kids fight over it when she died. Like she watched too many people do that. So she, you know, did stuff like she bought us LASIK surgery and she took us on, we would have family vacations pretty much every month. And like all of her, like all of her kids, all of her grandkids. And um, one of the times she took us on a cruise to somewhere in the Caribbean. And I, I think I had my 20th birthday on the cruise. And usually the last night of your cruise, they do a formal night, right? Mm -hmm. Everybody's going to cruise, you know, I have a formal night. So I brought my little prom dress or whatever. And I have always hated formal events because I feel so out of place. I like the story in my head is I'm just a country girl, right? Like I bale hay and I feed cows and I like 
clean bathrooms like that's right like so to go to prom it just feels so far out of me like all of high school I was like mascara maybe ponytail <laughs> that was me so these formal events it just showed me how out of place I was and then it also like you step into the appearance so then as a girl I would just it was just like you stand in the mirror and now you have to critique yourself right you have this idea of what women in formal gowns are supposed to look like. So if you don't look like that idea in your head, now it's like the scene from Mean Girls where you're like, my shoulders are too big and my mm-hmm. my elbows are too whatever, my neck is too, like, like the whole thing. So to me, those formal events are getting nice or even sometimes church when it was like, now you have to like up your appearance. To me, it was connected to like, now you just have to like feel all that crap that you feel when you look in the mirror. Okay, so I had this dress. I don't remember the dress at all, but we have the pictures. And I just remember like fussing about it and being so frustrated. Like I'm 20, I'm a 20 year old woman. Like I should be, you know, cute. And just, you know, I went into the dining room finally after I stopped fussing. And um, my sister leaned over to me and she said, Ruth, you actually look really pretty if you would just sit up and stop being so grumpy. Like in my head, I was like, oh my gosh, they're just going to look at me like Ruth is such a girl. She's trying to play dress up and she looks really stupid and this is out of place. And she's gained five pounds, like whatever it is that my thoughts were going. And so I was like, I don't want to be here. This is stupid. And so, so for her to say that, I was like, okay, fine. And I look back at the pictures and I can say, you did actually look super cute, honey. Like, why were you beating yeah. yourself up? But does all that standard? Okay. Then the more recent one was, it was just... Let's see, my husband got home. He's been gone all month and he just got home Saturday night, super late. So Sunday, it was yesterday. So yesterday morning, you know, I got ready for church, just my normal routine. And I came downstairs and my kids gasped. And I was like, what's happening? And my eight-year-old, she started dancing and she was like, mom, I don't know what it is, but when dad is around, you always look more beautiful. Yeah. And it's because oh. I either either I try more or he just makes me feel more beautiful. But I it's not like I added eyeliner. I didn't put on extra lipstick. Like it was, I've worn the outfit a hundred times. Like, you know, I don't have fancy makeup. Like I just have my routine that I can manage because that's what I know now. And it showed up like it was, it, and it shows up enough that my eight-year-old could see a pattern. And I think that's cool. That is awesome. And- <laughs> It is evidence that humans seek patterns and we notice patterns even at the young age of eight, which is why this conversation about high value women is so important. It is so important. That is why Ruth and I have made a commitment to show up here every week to talk about it because this is how important it is. Little eight-year-old girls are seeing patterns in their moms. And yeah. if we don't understand that we are creating that for them, then we are creating something unintentionally. And I don't want to do that. I want to create. Sorry, the deep part for me is um, so there's two things that I'm like fighting with my daughters or like inside. I'm just fighting inside. So my oldest daughter doesn't want to have kids. She's 14. She doesn't want to have kids. I, I'm I'm just trusting this because she's 14, but I know that part of it is because I have made motherhood look undesirable. And then the satisfying part about what my daughter observed is I'm sending the message that being a wife is beautiful. It can make you happy. It can, right? So it's kind of these kinds of this internal messaging stuff. It shows up more than just like, like, it's like a, it's a, it's a domino effect to what kind of messages you're sending the tiny message of, I don't deserve a nice shirt, or it's not, my time isn't worth it to spend 15 minutes curling my hair. Like I'm not worth the 15 minutes. These little messages build up to things like motherhood is beautiful or motherhood is undesirable. You just get fat and frumpy and ugly and bottom of the tier, or like being a wife is just drama and prison and like right? So it's all of these little messages that you send yourself that, that people are observing Mm -hmm. to the point where it's like being a wife makes you beautiful. (laughs) And you know what? We think think that what we think inside of our mind mind is our own own. and nobody knows. Yeah. It's like a victimless crime kind of thing. But 
I'm here to tell you, and you just created evidence for it, that what we think is created and other people see it. Now, your eight-year-old is beyond her years and could, and could verbalize that when dad's around, you're more beautiful. But there's most other eight-year-old little girls that don't have the language for that, but they know what they feel. They just can't put it into words. And what they feel, then they start acting on that. And if they feel like it's not good, then that is a pattern that they're going to start in their lives, right? So that is so awesome that she was able to verbalize that and that she noticed it. That's, that is awesome. It, it's exactly what we are talking about. You know, our kids are watching us. Who do we want to be for our kids? Who do we want to be for ourselves? What's the legacy that we want to create for ourselves and our families, right? 